What's up, you guys? I am about to share with you all my secrets, <laughs> all of the things I've picked up along the way. I've been doing YouTube makeup videos for 10 years, over 10 years now, and that is wild to me. But along the way, I've picked up a lot of tips and tricks. Some of them I used for years and then got rid of in favor of others. So I'm sharing with you today, and we're gonna get ready from beginning to end, my current go-to makeup look. I mean, you're seeing it, but I have a lot of little tips and things that I may have shared in a video here or there. Some of them I haven't shared that I, I want to share in order and explain why I do it the way I do it because I feel like this is something I've never really done here on my channel and it's time. It's time, baby. Especially if you're into like really simple kind of youthful looks, I feel like that is what I've been leaning into a lot lately. I'm so excited. I will share the products I used as well. I'll link them below in the order I used them. So if I don't mention what it was, you can at least look for it down there. Of course, if you do use any of my links, it does support my channel. So thank you so much. But yeah, I'm excited. I've had this video planned to do for a while. And like I said, I think it's just, it's time. But hopefully this is beginner friendly as well. If you're stumbling on this video and you've never watched any of my videos, I, I think that what I'm sharing is very beginner friendly. Like it's nothing um, that, anyone can't do, but I, like I said, little, little tips, little tricks. I'm so excited, can you tell? <laughs> I also wanna take a second to thank today's video sponsor, which is HelloFresh. Thank you so much, HelloFresh, for continuing to support my channel over the years. So if you've never heard of HelloFresh, it is a meal delivery service that we have loved for years now. We we just love it. We've discovered so many of our favorite go-to meals from HelloFresh. I love that you always get a full color menu card with how to make it laid out step-by-step. Step. It is super easy, and we actually love keeping these cards in a binder just in case. But they've got chef crafted seasonal recipes. They've got their fresh and fit summer menu. But I also love that they're a pre-portioned ingredient. So it helps cut down on food waste and just makes cooking really, really simplified. And if you're looking to eat really well this summer, they've got calorie smart options, protein smart lunch and dinner options, and they have new vegan dinners to choose from. And I just feel like it's really easy to find meals to help you reach whatever goals you may have with HelloFresh, which is really cool. But again, HelloFresh takes care of the meal plan planning, they deliver the ingredients, so everything you need to make a really delicious meal quickly is right there in front of you. Plus their fast and fresh recipes are ready in just 15 minutes or less. I am a big fan of those. And HelloFresh is 25% cheaper than takeout. We love ordering HelloFresh for those weeks that we just feel like we can't fathom the idea of finding the time to plan what our meals are gonna be, to make sure we have the right ingredients in the grocery store, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is when we lean on HelloFresh and that's what I've loved them for for the past few years. So if you wanna check out HelloFresh for yourself, you can go to hellofresh.com and use code JBRON50 at checkout for 50% off plus free shipping. That is such an amazing deal. Okay, you're seeing me like post workout and just a mess, but okay, Tyler obviously made this dinner. Looks so good. Have you tried it yet? No, I have not. Here we go, bottoms up. Looks like a professional chef made it. Oh yeah. All the different onions. Yeah, there's multiple onions. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it's so good. I love finding different ways to make tacos. This is like, you're gonna really like this. I guarantee it. <laughs> mm. So again, if you wanna check out HelloFresh for yourself, I will have the link and the code right at the top of the description box, but you just go to hellofresh.com, use my code JBRON50 to get that 50% off and free shipping. Thank you so much HelloFresh for sponsoring this part of the video. Now, let us kick it to me from like 35 minutes ago and let me share all my secrets. All right, so first thing I always do is put on lip balm. I've been really into the past few years thick balms. This is the NARS lip mask, um, which is nice and thick. I don't know that this is like my favorite one ever, but I will say you guys know I loved the Lawless, like all of their plumping stuff. I think that might have been the cause of all the dermatitis and rashes I was having. So I stopped using all of it and it went away. I don't know if that's really it. Um, I mean, the reality is we're all different. So like other people can use it and probably have no issue, but it really is the only thing that I stopped using where it actually went away. So I'm like, I'm too nervous to even start. So I do like this though. This is really nice and thick and moisturizing. So this kind of a lip balm, that's my jam. One thing I have been doing more often lately is actually moisturizing my face before putting on SPF. So for the longest time, I would kind of just use my SPF as my moisturizer, but I've realized that my skin ends up looking better throughout the day when I moisturized as well, you know what I mean? So this is the Dr. Jart Ceramidin. This is one of my favorites. I did, by the way, they've reformulated this 
and I swatched it, if you will, you know what I mean, felt it in store. It feels a little bit different, but not so different. So if you were turned off, cause you were, you know, I'm recommending this old version, which I think you can still get on Amazon, by the way. Um, the new version still feels really nice. Like honestly, when I run out of this, I probably will eventually repurchase the new one and actually try it, but just feeling it, it felt nice. So this has been great. I like this moisturizer because it's still nice and thick and moisturizing, but it, it just creates a thin layer. It's kind of crazy that it can feel so moisturizing, but still be really thin and lightweight on the skin. Then when I go in with SPF and foundation, I really have a nice layer of moisture because I've realized I try a lot of different SPFs and not all of them are as moisturizing as the next. And so this basically makes it idiot proof so that if I'm using a more drying formula foundation, no matter what kind of SPF I use, I know I've got a nice moisturized base underneath. That's more of a personal thing. I think a lot of people already do this, but this was something that I didn't do that I've started to. And I really feel like it's been better for my skin just in general, but also it makes the makeup look better. So another thing I've been doing when I have the extra bit of time is selective primer application. So primer is something I skip if I don't have the time, but when I do a couple of things, one, if I've got a poreless primer, I mean, I definitely do, I will apply that just where I need it. I used to apply this kind of thing everywhere and I just don't feel like it's necessary or even helpful, especially like for me, sometimes I'm trying to get a glowy look on certain parts of my skin and I don't necessarily want something mattifying or poreless or whatever. So this, for me, I concentrate on my T-zone. This is just the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer, their liquid one I am enjoying, by the way. Um, a little bit more, I didn't really love their putty primer in the pot just cause I don't know, this I like a little bit better. So then I can go in with a glowy product in other targeted areas of the face. So this is my favorite glowy primer. It's the Say Glowy Super Gel and Star Glow. This is like the mini size, it's lasted me forever. But I will take this and concentrate it where I actually want glow. So not necessarily on my nose. I used to put glowy primer everywhere and I'm like, why is the foundation always breaking up on my nose? I'm like probably cause you've got all this stuff on there that isn't necessarily helping the wear time <laughs> of your foundation, you know? So I put that on again, that's really lightweight. I love a nice thick glowy product, but sometimes less is more. And when it comes to like layering on moisturizer and then SPF and then something glowy, it can be nice to make sure they're thinner layers so they're not like pilling up or anything like that. So another thing, I already put it on and then forgot that I hadn't hit record again, I've been doing when applying my foundation is mixing to get my correct shade. So like right now I've got self tanner that's developing as we speak. And so I mix it with something darker that doesn't mess too much with the formula of the original foundation. So this is the Revlon Illuminance. I did get another shade if you were curious, 205, and it's it's actually pretty good for me. But I mix it with the Herborean BB Cream in Doré. It's a darker shade for me. So that's a part of it, actually getting it to match a little bit better when I self tan. That's, you know, is what it is. But I like to spread the color on the area I want it on instead of dotting it because I found that dotting it sometimes, I mean, it works, but I feel like a lot of it will get like stuck on an area of the sponge, but if it's already spread out in the areas you want, then you're just taking the time to blend it in, but it's already sinking into your skin. Does that make sense? I just feel like it ends up being a more even application. You waste less product because a lot of times, and I'm going to like with the rest of this, I'll just grab it on the sponge. But if I did that for the entire look, I feel like a lot of it gets lost in the sponge versus just having it applied directly to my face. So that's one thing really that I feel like even if I used a brush to blend in my foundation, that still can be a good move because again, then you're just using the brush as the tool to blend, not necessarily for also applying it and then it's kind of uneven. Um, I need a little bit more, but if you were looking for a good drugstore foundation, I, especially now that I have a shade that works better for me, I have been loving the Revlon Illuminance one. Another thing I like doing is tapping whatever foundation all over my eye region. I know some people don't like doing it because if you're doing like a super intricate eye look, you might worry about having too many layers on the eyes. My thing is I like that it makes everything look even. So then any concealer I add is just icing on the cake, but I already have a little bit of a base of stuff covering that area. Does that make sense? Definitely blend down the neck a little bit. So with concealer, I have really just been focusing it right there 
and there. Now, one thing the past few days I've been toggling with, I've been noticing that no matter what concealer I use, it can look a little bit weird when it mixes with whatever foundation over here. And I think part of that is because I'm blending it out too far that way. So I've been kind of messing with not blending it out so far. Um, of course, for today, using a brush I've never used. I'm liking these Anissa Beauty brushes. I've finally gotten to try them. I posted about it on my Instagram recently. And um, this is their foundation brush, but I kind of like that the shape of it is triangle. So really just concentrating and then maybe whatever's left, just kind of tap up there. I'll link anything I'm using if, in case I don't mention it aloud. I'll link anything I'm using in the order I use it down below. That was the Catrice True Skin Concealer, my favorite of all time. And it's like $8 on Amazon. Okay, so we are moisturized, we are glowy, we are covered up. So for brows, I nothing extreme honestly you guys i just kind of brush through whatever pomade so nothing new or revolutionary here if you need one i just recently tried the one from maybelline i can link below that if you need a lot of color added to your brows every morning and you don't want it to budge that is like one of the best products i've tried for that but i definitely kind of just go for a little bit lighter of a look just based on my own preference right now i feel like you can like never get the colors to match on either. Like sometimes it's like one brow is darker than the other or something. Maybe it's just the way the lighting's hitting. One huge thing I've been doing is using powder foundation on my eyelids. If you're someone that you don't really wear sh eyeshadow much, the difference this can make is kind of astounding. I felt like I was constantly seeing people with like no eyeshadow with like a little bit of liner and mascara, which is definitely what I like, but their their eye region looked so even. And when I finally decided like, wait, why don't I try something that I use all the time in other areas of my face that makes everything look nice and covered up and even and it doesn't budge, powder foundation, baby. So I'll just use my eyeshadow brush, but I'll just do a nice layer of that. And I just feel like it evens everything out, like especially comparing that to this, you can see where there's a little bit of creasing from the foundation and concealer. This takes care of all of that. It looks nice all day long. It makes it look more cohesive. I feel like having that little bit of coverage up there and I'll even bring a little bit in there just to kind of brighten that area. But I feel like powder foundation on the eyelid is such an underrated little trick that can really make a difference and it takes two seconds. You can't screw it up, you know? This is the Makeup Forever Powder Foundation, the new formula I'm loving. I'm gonna do something different just to show on this video. But one thing I've been messing with a lot is just doing my face makeup and not doing liner, eyeshadow, or mascara. Because I always feel like to do my complete makeup look, I'm like, well, of course I'll have liner and mascara on and blah, blah, blah. But I've realized like, you know, I don't hate my eyes, not that, <laughs> I'm saying a lot of things. My point is I also like my eyes without makeup on them. So just doing, like going in with the foundation and everything, going in with bronzer and blush, whatever I want, but then leaving the eye region alone like this can be really nice too. So don't discount that you can do other parts of your makeup. You don't have to do every single step that's ever been invented like I feel that I have to, I don't know. I don't know what kind of mental block that is, but there you go. All right, so I'm gonna do liner mascara, however, because I do have a few things I've been very intentionally doing lately that I like. One thing I've been doing is using a brown liner. This is my favorite. I talk about in every video, if you've been around a while, this is the Sephora 12 hour liner. It is waterproof. It will stay in your waterline. It is the best, I think it's $11. It is the best $11 you will spend at Sephora. They have a hundred million colors, truly. This one in tiramisu is my favorite. I do have a few in my cart, like some other colors to try. What I've been doing with this is taking it and lining the eye really tightly. It's called tight lining for a reason. Um, basically I'm darkening the lash line and that makes everything, like it makes your lashes look a little bit fuller, defines the eye just a little bit, especially if you aren't blessed with like super dark lashes, if that's something you're into. So then I'll go on the waterline above. And again, that's just thickening that base of the lashes. It's gonna give you somewhat of a false lash look without wearing false lashes. And a lot of times that's all I'll do for liner. And I feel like, I mean, look at the difference. It really does define the eye, darken it without doing that much. But another thing I've been doing the past year or so is taking some sort of like liner brush, something really thin and taking whatever you have on there and just using it to kind of smudge it out. And this is where I feel like I have really hit my stride. Like I really like the way this smudge look 
looks. It just kind of darkens the area and makes it look a little imperfect, but in that way, I feel like it almost looks more natural and it'll really kind of seamlessly blend into the mascara that you're that I'm gonna put on. So another thing I'll do is kind of flick it up just a little bit, even that out, and then you can use your finger to kind of clean it up if you want, if you want it to flick a little bit more. So yeah, that's been my go-to quick and easy daily liner trick. I feel like if you're maybe a little more mature, this is something you can do that can really, I feel like make your look a little more youthful by doing less. Do you know what I'm saying? Like sometimes I feel like when I wear a lot, a lot of makeup, I think sometimes it makes me look older than I am. Not always in a bad way, cause I think it can kind of look like glamorous and cool. So it's not to say that I don't still like that kind of look, but I do think there's something to be said for a little bit less and just seeing what you look like with that. I think you might be surprised. Cause if you'd asked me like four or five years ago, I was into like, I was layering three liners no matter what. I would do a pencil liner to tight line. I would do a cream gel eyeliner on top of that. And then I would do, it's kind of crazy now that I'm saying it all. Then I would do a liquid liner on top of that to kind of create the wing and sharpen it all up. And I, I, I would never have envisioned myself just doing a little bit of brown liner and being cool with it. And now it's like, this is my go-to look. I feel like this is a little bit darker, so I might add a little bit more back here. I'm gonna lower that wing. I don't want it to be so, so dramatic. All right, so there we go. Mascara, really the main different thing I've been doing is not less mascara, but not doing it on the lower lash line. So I'm gonna use, this is a really natural looking, um, mascara the covergirl clean topia but i just have it and it's kind of perfect for this look because it's actually a brown mascara which again can be a little less um harsh but i feel like when you're pairing any mascara with this little bit of liner it can look really natural but still really flirty and like pushed up i'm saying that and i might go in with something a little more va va boom because my day to day i like a little bit more so let me i'm gonna swap it out grabbing the charlotte tilbury push up lashes. I have a drugstore dupe for this. If you want to know what it is, I will link the video. <laughs> Shameless plug, but hey, you'll learn about a few other dupes and it's a really good drugstore mascara. Um, so yeah, just kind of really pushing up the lashes and then leaving, leaving it at that. I feel like that can look really, not natural necessarily. I mean, you can tell I'm wearing mascara, but by not having it on the lower lash line, I like the way that looks. Now I do know that is something that not everyone likes like not a lot of people feel like they have to have liner on the bottom they have to have mascara and i get it like you do you and we all like our eyes to look a certain way but this was something that was almost revolutionary to me because i had always put on at least eyeshadow on the lower lash line and at least mascara but i started to realize that sometimes i would feel like i would look in the mirror and feel like i look like twiggy i'll pop a picture on the screen with like the lash that's like I don't know, and I know I'm exaggerating and I know I didn't look like that, but it is kind of odd. I'll see old pictures of me where I would do my makeup like that and I'm like, oh my gosh, like I look like a different person. I definitely like this look on me a little bit better. So another trick that I'll do, and I'll put the TikTok or Instagram reel on the screen, uh, basically where I show how I use a lighter shadow. This is actually my bronzer and I'll just kind of smudge it on the lower lash line and that creates a little bit of definition if you crave that. Um, but it also will kind of hide hide some of your fine lines. So um, I'm trying to decide if I want to do that tonight or not. I might do it tonight. It's like midday. Um, I might do just a little bit, but I, I really do want to keep it light. But I'll, that's something I'll do if I am doing a little bit of eyeshadow and I feel like, okay, I need to balance it out. That's an easy thing to do. And again, I feel like it kind of hides some of those fine lines that kind of hug the eye area really nicely. It makes them look a little less obvious and I think it can still look really, really pretty. So another thing I've been doing is taking my cream bronzer. This is my favorite one, but I think I love the formula so much, but another reason I like it is because it is a bronzer that is so close to my actual skin color. Like it's definitely bronzer than, you know what I mean? More bronze than my, my skin tone, but it's not so stark. And I think doing that has been kind of a game changer because it makes it so that it's kind of foolproof. I can go crazy with it and it never looks super muddy or weird because again, it's closer to my skin tone. It's not as obvious, but it still has the impact I want it to have where I look just a little bit more defined, a little bit more bronzed up. 
this shade if you're curious so it's the nars cream bronzer this is in laguna 01 so my my tip would be find it doesn't have to necessarily be this one but finding a bronzer that really is not so different than yours because i feel like for the longest time which is ridiculous there'd be like a bronzer and there'd just be one shade <laughs> Uh, so I'm glad the times have changed, but yeah, it's, I feel like finding the right shade of bronzer is a game changer and mm, I just love this one so much. Now I do, like I said, have self tanner developing, so I feel like I should put a little more on, but on normal days, this is the move. I might honestly get the next shade up so that I can use, I don't know. making all these big plans, but when fall rolls around, I don't self tan anymore. So it's really more of just a summer problem. <laughs> So I'm just gonna tap a little bit of the Too Faced chocolate bronzer. This is the milk chocolate. So again, their chocolate bronzer is a little bit darker than my skin tone. This milk chocolate is kind of perfect for me and I love the way it smells. It smells so good. This is definitely a nostalgic bronzer. Like it's been around for quite a while, but it actually is a good bronzer, you know? So blush wise, I've been going a lot higher with my blush. Um, I think that's kind of a trend that's been going around for a while, but I've got this new Tarte Maracuja Juicy Blush. It's a cream blush and it's really a weird form. It's like way like thicker than I expected when I first swatched it. But um, I have been really enjoying this with the uh, e.l.f. domed stipple. I'll just get a little bit and kind of stipple it on. But like I said, I just go higher. I used to put my blush like here and I've just been doing it a lot higher. And again, I feel like it looks a little more youthful, but it just kind of pulls everything up in a way. This formula, although it is weird, is really pretty, really, really pretty. And it blends in easier than I thought it would. I was nervous that it'd be like way too pigmented based on swatching it. And I think it can be if you just go ham, but I feel like this is looking really pretty. This shade, if you are curious of this, is rose. So yeah, I just like blush. Now I haven't really gotten into the pink across the nose thing. I know a lot of people are really into that. I just feel like my nose already has enough redness to it. I, I don't want to add any more. I don't think it looks cute on me the way it looks cute on other people. So that's not something I'm super into, but yeah. I do, you see what I mean by with it being higher? It does look different. One thing I haven't been doing as much is highlighter. I still will use it from time to time. Like it's definitely a step that I skip without even realizing I skip. And I'm like, oh, okay, I'm fine. I think part of it for me is that I use a lot of cream cheek products. So I already usually have some glow that I don't feel like I need anymore. Um, but if it's like a night out, I'll usually throw some on. But one place I do like to add highlighter is right here. So before I do that, let me powder now that I'm saying that. So one thing I've gotten more into is using loose powder, but I've discovered the way that works for me because I've never been into loose powder. I'm like, it's just, it's messy. It's, it's too much. I, I feel like you can just see it on people's skin. You know what I mean? But the way that it's been working for me has been amazing is being very selective and using a small brush to apply it. And I know this is something that, who did I just hear talking about this? And I was like, oh my gosh, I've been doing that too. Maybe it was Taylor. But I, I love the idea of it because it's so true. Like a lot of times you'll have like a huge powder brush, which I'll use with powder foundation, just go crazy. But oftentimes you don't necessarily need it every single location on your face. So this has been a game changer. So this is the Huda Beauty Cupcake powder. I'm still not sure if I like love this, but I'll definitely powder my under eye with just a thin layer, nothing crazy. And I really just tap it on this inner part. I don't go all the way out here because I feel like, I don't know, sometimes that can make it all look a little too crepey. And so then I'll get a little bit more and I don't mind having the glow out here, but I want to help this area not be so shiny. So just lightly patting a thin layer there where I'm able to get exactly where I want Look how nice that looks. Thin layer on the nose, especially the sides of the nose and like right there. And this has helped a lot when it comes to like wear time. And I'll do a little bit on the chin and that's it. I leave alone all of the area that has the nice pretty like creams and stuff I feel like can look really good. Now obviously this works for me as someone that has a pretty normal, not super dry, not super oily skin tone or skin type. If you've got a skin type that's super oily, you might need powder everywhere. So, you know. So now that we powdered, the highlight I will add, like I said, from time to time, is just right here. I think there's something, I was looking at photos, this was a few years ago, of like celebrities. And I was noticing that all of them would have just like a, this little bit of glow right in this region. I don't even know that it was intentional, but it just gave them that very youthful look because it made them look like they were kind of 
glowy, but without it being crazy. You know, like we've powdered that area there in the middle. So it was always in this region. That's one of those like weird tricks that like, I don't know if it makes as much of a difference as I think it does, but I think it looks really nice. So there we go. My little highlighter forehead trick. So another thing I have been doing a lot is lining my lips and then putting a super juicy gloss on top. I feel like it has been a while since I have reached for lipstick proper. You know what I mean? It's just something that, I don't know. I just haven't reached for as much. Now this lip might not perfectly match my bright pink that I've got going on, but that's all right. So any lip liner, this is the Charlotte Tilbury just because I have it in front of me. I really like, if you want a really good lip liner that is kind of in the middle price range wise, the Rare Beauty ones are so good. And then if you want a really amazing drugstore option, the LA Girl ones, the automatic ones, I'll link below. They're like a couple bucks. So good, so good. So I'm just kind of lightly lining them because again, I'm gonna be going with the glossy gloss that I do think having a little bit of lip liner to start can just nicely keep your lips where they are. And what I mean, you know what I mean? It just defines them obviously. But for me, like I feel like the edges of my lips are really kind of wiggle woggly. So having a line, even if it's not super obvious, just around it really does help it look more cohesive and like put together. So you see what I mean? Like it's nothing crazy. So one of my favorite like juicy glosses is the Ami Cole Lip Treatment Oil. This is in Bliss. It's not gonna have as much color as you see here. It's pretty um, clear, but I, that, that's what I'm really into. Kind of just like a glazed, but not glittery, like a glazed wet look, but I want it to be something that's super comfy and not sticky and this is exactly that. And you see what I mean by my lips look defined, but I really didn't do that much work. You know what I mean? But it definitely, I feel like with the lip liner versus without, it does look different. And this really does make the difference between that. I feel like I'm not making any sense. I really hope that I am. So that's everything. Those are all like my little tips and tricks I've learned that I have really been enjoying that day in and day out, like these are generally the things I'm doing, the ways I'm doing them. I hope this was helpful, whether you were just kind of curious to hear why I apply things certain ways. Maybe you've seen me do it in videos and I didn't talk about it. Um, or just to have a video you can turn to if you are just wanting to try little tips here and there. Obviously I'm not like some makeup artist, like this is really simple stuff, but I do feel like those little kinds of tips and tricks that you pick up along the way can make a big impact when you put them all together. So let me know if you're gonna try any of these little things that I shared. Let me know what is your number one makeup application tip or trick, like something you started doing and you were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't been doing this all along. Let me know what that is. I'm so curious. Perhaps I'll do a future video trying a bunch of them. That could be really fun. So if you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up. I love you guys so much. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring a portion of this video. If you wanna check out HelloFresh for yourself, you can go to hellofresh.com and use code JBRAWN50 for 50% off plus free shipping. I'll have the link and code right at the top of the description box for you. Now is a great time to check it out. I promise it will make your life easier. It has made our lives so much easier. We always have that week where we're like, I am so glad we did HelloFresh this week because there was no way we were gonna fit in meal planning with getting the stuff at the grocery store, etc. It is a game changer. Anyway, if you enjoyed this and you're into makeup, maybe you're looking for some drugstore price things. I do have an entire playlist of trying drugstore makeup. I will link that below if you want to see it. I have planned a bunch of drugstore makeup videos. Um, that's gonna be really fun. <laughs> I'm really excited. It's something I used to do that I haven't done in a long time and those videos are gonna be awesome. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that, subscribe. I might've already started it depending on when you're seeing this video. I'm trying to think. Anyway, I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one, bye.